Now our next guest played a pretty big part in securing Team Ireland's most successful Olympics ever, just a couple of weeks ago. Uh, yeah, we're delighted to be joined by two of our Paris history makers. Please welcome bronze medalist rowers Philip Doyle and Daryl Lynch. Gentlemen, uh, it's lovely to see you. Good morning, how are you? Good, morning. Good yeah, thanks for having us. You're so quiet. Yeah, okay. a second we're ago, all like, chat during the ad break. Oh, yeah, like, oh, yeah. the show, you know, we're all, oh we're here on. we go. This is it. This is it. Come on, say what, what you were really saying during the ad break. What a, a haul. I mean, like we just said there, record breaking, a, a greatest ever performance for Ireland. Uh, that welcome that you received in Dublin last Monday was humongous. How did it feel? I think I've said the word savage about 100 times in the last two weeks. It just felt, yeah, class. Uh, the scene in the O'Connell Street, so backed up yeah. the whole way. It was amazing. Yeah. So you get you get the Dublin one right, but then you travel to Clonmel to where a Clonmel, a town temporary, not known for throwing no. there now, Dara. But you certainly put it on the map. What was the Clonmel homecoming like? Because you went as well, um, Philip. So what was it like, Dara? Um, it was a lot bigger than I was anticipating, anyway. But they were they were supporting me for the whole week, really. But I was unaware of the support. Um, there are big crowds showing up to yeah there it is. Look at this, like. Yeah, there are big crowds showing up to watch all the races. But yeah, we did this. We we showed up and after we did our talk and all, all the kids wanted our signatures and we were wondering why they want our signatures. Yeah, but I was you just, were wondering I, why. Yeah, well, as I, an <laughs> Olympic bronze <laughs> medalist, well, why do these kids? Are they making me sign a contract? What's going on here? Yeah, but I was just. I didn't have a signature. Look so I, <laughs> yeah. Giving away the medal. I was just putting my name on the sheet, and there's Phil's big fancy signature of it. Yeah, it was crazy. That was so, a doctor mm, scroll. Yeah. <laughs> what was the story? Was it a psychological thing that you were sort of uh, you you were living in your bubble? You weren't kind of focusing because honestly, uh, we were watching videos from Clamell for the yeah. entire time, and honest, it was humongous what was going on. Yeah, I think it was more. They probably didn't want to put too much pressure on me and show so many people watching but yeah straight after the race i'd say mm. everyone came up to me showing me did you see this, did you see this? Yeah, yeah yeah it was amazing yeah i think uh, we were kind of inside here going i bet you they haven't paid for a pint there's one thing you <laughs> haven't paid for they're lashing out chicken fillet rolls at you for it do you get a free chicken fillet roll? Did you get a free chicken oh, fillet yeah, roll? Yeah, then, then, yeah. <laughs> then i was sitting there for a second yeah. going <laughs> i was jealous of your free chicken fillet yeah. rolls yeah Chicken fillet rolls on... For free. Yeah. If you want to get into Ireland, it's good books. Give him, yeah. give him an old chicken fillet roll. That's all good. Has it actually sunk in, Philip? Because this is, uh, you know, you're the part of the most successful Olympic team we've ever had. Yeah, it, it, it has actually, to be honest, over the last few days. And I've been down to... My auntie has a little crash in the town that I'm from, Banbridge, and the kids came out. And I came and visited them before with the uh, World Championship medal. I met them the other day, and I was kind of like... I used to go to this little crash. Like I used to go there to the part, to the place and all the kids were out and it was just like they were showing them the medal and stuff. That's when it was really like, geez, this is a full cycle now. There could be somebody else now coming up from the bottom. So yeah, it has sunk in over the last few days. Yeah, that must be pretty special. Even ju even just signing the autographs for kids that they could be in a position to go, yeah, well, I'm going to give this a crack or this, yeah. I'm going to get on the ground, ground yeah. floor now on this. And we missed all the pizza in the pub actually because we were stuck. I Signing, I was like, Oh, we'll do a few and then we'll go. And then there was just it kept coming and coming. You didn't miss the pizza, the pizza, and he wouldn't look after you for a chicken fillet roll. Oh, well, I, mean, I, I got another message this morning with uh, free pizza. So. <laughs> <laughs> it's all about the well, food. Well, looked after, yeah. Well, 6,000 calories a day, you got to fill up yeah, somehow. Well, absolutely. Do we right have right. the old medals? Uh, Come on, they've got to lash them out of the pocket. Look at them here. Oh, wow. So, your diary, yours is the one that got wrecked. Yeah. That we yeah. saw the video, like it was all patinated. Yours is kind of like that. Mine has gone Philip. wrecked. It's nearly got a ne the next level, the la layer down. So The next layer down. Yeah, They've started studying yours. Yeah, they're using mine for, so I want to keep mine, but they want to take away for research. So sure. they want to take see away for research for why yeah, it's going. It. Can I? Yeah, can of I? course. Like they want to see what's wrong with the medals. What's and, wrong and why they're yeah, patinating yeah. like and this. Then, this is across the board on the bronze ones. Just the yeah. bronze. Yeah. Okay, right. Some of the gold, but not too many, but the bronze <laughs> seems to be a chronic issue, yeah. Okay, so what's... you said to me when I put this on during the break, you were like, you can't put that on, you're never going to win an Olympic medal now. Yeah, well, yeah. I think, I think, uh, just, I well, think that boat has been rowed. And now you've got a good excuse, at least. There we go. Uh, tell us about the race, gentlemen. Uh, um, well, first of all, Philip, tell us about the, the night before, I mean, uh, like even when I'm coming in here in the morning, I get a bit nervous. I'm like, oh, Jesus, I've got that big, th I've, I've got to go and do that. I imagine representing the nation on the biggest sporting stage in the world uh, will give you the jitters the night before. How do you prepare? Well, to be honest, the, we had 
Mona went in her bronze two nights beforehand, but we had a rest day, so I had to like finish. And they were racing so late, and we get to bed quite early. So I was in in the room trying to be like, right, get down, get the body down, get the heart rate down, get to sleep, and I got to sleep that night. And then Daniel won the medal the next night, and Daniel's from like thirty minutes up the road from me. So I was like, okay, right, okay, he won one. We have our medal race tomorrow. Time to get to bed. And I actually struggled to get the body down, but then I managed to get into a nice rhythm. Got my book out, read it, went to sleep. So the night before, perfect, felt great. Okay, genuinely, okay. genuinely got you're... straight to sleep the whole way through, and then I woke up to go to the bathroom at like half four, and I was walking to the bathroom. I was like, "You're racing for another big medal in three hours." I was like, no, don't think about it, don't think about it. And then I got back to sleep, and then we woke up. We do a bit of training every the morning of the race just yeah. to get the body yeah. warmed up, and then I came down from that. I was like, "I feel good, I feel good, body feels good, mind feels good." And then I tried to eat the breakfast, and I was like eating sick. Yeah, it was, and I look, I was looking across at him, and I was taking like little bites, and I was like. This is grim, isn't it? And he was like, "Yeah, I can't eat this breakfast <laughs> at all." Were you like, that yeah. nervous? Well, see, I thought we'd be—I'd ner yeah. be nervous for other races, but then for this one, I was like, "No, this is real, like real nerves." I was yeah. like, "You haven't, yeah, you haven't actually been nervous before. You've just been a wee bit butterfly." Whereas, like, this is proper nerves. So, like, the breakfast was very hard to get down. Yeah, it was so exciting watching you, like Derek. It was so exciting lepping about the place. Like, it's so good. How was the actual race itself? Do you remember it? Um, like I, I think the waiting around was by far the hardest because it's a week long. So you do your heat. We knew we were good enough to perform. Did the semi. We knew we were good enough to perform again. And it was just the waiting around. And I think once you hit the water, it kind of all goes away. You you've rowed those strokes a million times. So um, it kind of just becomes second nature. And especially in rowing, you get so tired that like all the senses kind of shut down. So luckily you you have to just go into the uh, stuff that you're used to. But wow. um, compared to every other race we have done, um, it was obviously the crowd was about, well. Yeah. Oh yeah, we, we, why we, normally, we normally six have or seven like, times what yeah, we use here. Used to, yeah. Yeah. Normally, Did that motivate you? Because even yeah. compared to Tokyo or whatever, it'd be like, yeah, there's people around, yeah. our teammates are like around. It felt, it felt kind of like the lake, close in a bit over you but um i don't think it really puts you off or makes it better what do you, you think philip because you gives me a bit of energy because then i'm like ah oh, sure they're all watching i better push yeah. off yeah next a couple bit. of percent yeah it's just a little bit more yeah. you can kind of take the the pressure on the the roar of the crowd and use it a wee bit yeah so. I feel like we kind of do that, especially in the second half of the race, where we start coming a bit faster and faster yeah. towards the end. It like it keeps keeps it going and keeps the adrenaline going, so it was nice. And when we were in fourth with 300 meters to go, we we're obviously in a lot of pain, and we we're like, we're not coming out of this yeah. without <laughs> the medal. So. We're doing this. Yeah, yeah. Are you talking to each other in the boat? No. No, not you're not. Much. You just know that one this or two is what words. You have to do. One or two words, but not it. much. Yeah. yeah. What I, words? Are they clean? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> more technical calls like moving or length or yeah. he'll ask for like a bit more like he'll ask for a bit more length or give him something on the legs for a few. Okay. Yeah. So, so okay. it's technical. Okay. Yeah, technical calls, um, yeah. I think your dad passed away mm -hmm. a few years ago and the mm -hmm. night before there's a video of your dad and you watched that before the race, did yeah, you? Yeah, I kinda tried to keep that to myself, but I was on the he used to work for the, the BBC and they asked me and I let it slip, but uh yeah, the, the night before, and I, I haven't watched it since the, the week after, but yeah. But you do a lot of this for, you mentioned your mother, that for years she has traveled around watching you row, sometimes by herself. Yeah, just, yeah. Just what, like, and that's a huge motivation for you, thinking of the sacrifice? Yeah, well, I'm an only child and she's on her own now, so she would always try and get a friend to come. So it's usually a different friend to every race. So it's kind of, it's nice for her. She had family and cousins and everyone yeah. there for this one. And I don't think she's still stressed watching it, but. It was nice for her to have that big group, you know, a huge big group. She went out with all my cousins for a meal during the week and I was kind of gutted I missed it because it seemed to have the crack. But yeah, it's You were nice. getting ready to win one of these. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. So yeah. It, it, felt, it, 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 it didn't pay off. Yeah. More yeah. pressure because the cousins had paid for flights and hotels over to watch yeah. me <laughs> than everyone watching at home. To be yeah. I'd be invoicing you if that yeah, was the case. Yeah, because your cousins will tell you straight up, oh, you didn't even win a medal and I went all the way yeah. to Paris. Gutted, <laughs> yeah. It wasn't yeah. worth my while. Yeah. Uh, so what's next? Well, uh, you're still, it's, it's only been a, a literally a wet week yeah. uh, since since you're home. You're you're still uh, decompressing. What? Where are we next? What's what's happening after this, Philip? For me, mm. well, if I can get my UK medical license back, I'll head to work. 
And then I go and... Uh, I'm just going to go back and be a doctor. At my friend's wedding this week, so as soon as I get that, then I can get organised. And then I think Dara has yeah, a few Yeah, I'm off to a wedding yeah. too, actually. You're off to a wedding too? Yeah, Do you have friend. any other... Because you went to Yale yeah. in America. So, yeah, I'm going over to America for a wedding. You're going over to America for a, a wedding? A lot of my friends are actually getting married. They get, they get married young over there. Yeah. So, yeah. And then what's the plan? What's the future plan? What's going on? Uh, are you going to medical school too in Ireland? <laughs> Uh, we'll, we'll see. We'll <laughs> he see. got in. He yeah. got in. But you've done. <laughs> in, but we'll you see. did your economics degree. Yeah. We have just. It's four years away. There's been it's so a long much. Time, yeah. There's been so much chat now about. Obviously, Paul O'Donovan is over in Canada doing the World Rowing Championships at the minute. Yeah. About heavyweight groups. About the four of you joining together in LA, and you've just won a medal, Philip. Yeah. yeah well, Paul kind of fired it out in an interview. And he kind of caught us by surprise. He said, oh, we're doing a four-man next year. But it sounds like not a bad idea. If yeah. we could get a quad going, maybe could be good for a bit. But yeah. So definitely... Paul O'Donovan fires out a lot of things in interviews. <laughs> yeah, he does, yeah. He does. Yeah. So were, did you know he was going to throw you under the bus at some stage? No, not, not really. Not like this? But no, it would be a nice thought now, to be honest, next year, if we if we could see how fast that boat could be and if we all had the time. But yeah. I'd definitely give it one more season, a few races next year, because it'll be post Olympics, and uh, you know the competition does dip a little bit in, yeah. in intensity because a okay. lot of people take a bit of time away yeah. after the big one, and then it starts to ramp up coming into the Olympics. So it would be nice to. Well, that's not a no. It's not yeah. a no. That's we the four of them. It'd be I nice to test that idea out now. They're confirming it. Um, it's a pleasure meeting you. Dara's looking, giving me daggers. He's like, I don't know what I'm doing. I'm going to a wedding. Leave me alone. Don't ask me about anything else. Philip Doyle and Dara Lynch, bronze medalist from the Olympic. It's such a pleasure. It's so cool. It's amazing. Thank you so much for coming. We really appreciate it. It's covered in makeup. Sorry, man. It's not. It's covered. That's what it is. That's the problem.